What's up guys, YST here and welcome back to another Raid Shadow Legends video. And today, one that I'm actually very excited to make, but at the same time, it might turn a little bit cringe towards the end or the middle or wherever it pops up. Because Raid has set a fun little task for content creators. And to celebrate the fourth year anniversary of Raid, they want us to react to our first ever Raid Shadow Legends videos. So they're taking us back to our roots to see where it all began. And it should be a really cool thing to see, hopefully. Hopefully I didn't do too bad. From what I remembered, I didn't even look like I wanted to be there. But we're going to revisit that all in today's video. But that is not all, guys, because you guys are getting involved as well. As each of us who submits an entry will have some nice rewards to give away to our audiences. So there's going to be five winners for one legendary skill tome, one rank five chicken, one XP boost for three days, 400 energy, and four sets of 50 multi battles each. And that should all be coming up soon. So if you guys do want to get involved in that, all you have to do is just be a subscriber to the YouTube channel. Head over to the comment section below and include your UM code in any of your comments. But I did think it would be nice to just let me know what was the first ever video that made you want to subscribe to my channel. So if I'm taking you guys back to my roots, I also want to see the route that you guys subscribe to, I guess. I thought that'd be pretty fun to throw in there. But okay, um, let's just bring up the actual video itself, all right? God, this is going to be so cringe. So the first ever video was actually called Patch 3.2 New Champions Incoming. And I can't remember what was incoming in this patch, if I'm honest. But we're going to see that in today's video. Um, you can see here that I've not actually watched it all. I watched a little bit just to see how bad this was. And then I was like, damn, this is looking bad. But yeah, just a little backstory, guys. In terms of Raid, like I've been doing this for two years and one month now in terms of content creation. And I've made almost 500 videos for Raid. I have never created content for any other game prior to this. And it's been a crazy journey. Like, when I first got into it, I never thought of, wow, this is going to become a full-time job. Or we're going to be at 25,000 subscribers, which thank you guys so much, by the way. Such an amazing milestone. But I just got into it because I just loved Raid, right? Um, we was in the middle of COVID, we couldn't get out of our houses, and I wanted to keep my brain ticking, right, so I don't get brain dead at home. So I thought, let's just talk about something that I'm passionate about, and also to get to know more people involved in this community. Because in real life, I don't really know anybody alongside one of my family members that actually plays this game. So I thought, let me just, you know, communicate with some of the people out there, maybe... 10, 20 people that likes the same stuff as me and also just promote my clan a little bit, if I'm honest. Um, but anybody, um, I just want to say a little word as well because I do get a lot of comments in my videos like, how do you start up content creation? What, like, what's the kind of things that you need and stuff? Well, you're going to see in this video that, well, I've spoken about this on Fiction's interview, that I had internet, don't get me wrong, but I was using something called a dongle where I was using my mobile hotspot internet, which had like one upload speed and 0 0.5 download. And it was taking me like four hours, no exaggeration guys, four hours to upload this video you're about to witness, right? And those are the kind of things that I had to go through in order to get to this stage, right? And my PC that I used to have used to crash when I'm trying to, you know, export the video in Premiere Pro and stuff like that. But to those out there thinking, how can you get started? Mobile phones have such an amazing camera, right? Uh, my mic to this day is not expensive. It was about £100 from a shop in Argos. It's a HyperX um, mic. Got a monitor, a PC setup, and yeah, you can use your laptops, gaming laptops, whatever that may be, or even just editing on your phone to start off with. And I'd say just believe in yourself and knowing that not, nothing great comes instantly. It takes years of dedication, depending, obviously a bit of it is luck, don't get me wrong, but Raid is such a welcoming community. And if you guys do want to get involved, everybody is welcome, right? I love seeing new creators come through because it just also reminds me of when I first started and seeing them blossom. Like one example would be HWZ or Nub Raids, right? Such amazing additions to the community. And also everyone in this community is so, so nice, man. Like you might see that we do a lot of collaborations on the channel and stuff. And that's because everybody's so welcoming. But yeah, I'd say... Believe in yourself. Don't think that you need top-notch equipment to get started. I always say that the first video, 30 videos is just full-out learning, right? Don't expect anything from them. And if you get something from them, then great, right? But it's something that's going to take a lot of dedication, I'd say. Okay, um, all, with that all out of the way, let's react to this. Let's go.
That's my throwback intro, guys. Let's go. What's going on? It's your boy YST and welcome to the channel. This is my first ever Raid Shadow Legends video and what a better way to start off than getting right into patch 3.2 which just, is dropping. Do you know what's funny about this guys? Um, that's like my COVID trim because I just decided to shave everything off, right? <laughs> so because obviously you couldn't go out, you couldn't go to the barbershop. So I just went zoop, took it all off, buzz cut, let's go. I'll be live tomorrow, so let's get right into it. What, do you know what's just crazy? I still use this, guys. It's been over two years and I still use my old subscribe button in my edits. I, I really do need to update that. Starting off, we've got King Garrog, legendary force attack orc champion. Gigantic oh Cleavers, attacks one enemy two times, has a 35% chance of placing a stun debuff for one turn. The chance increases to 50%. If okay, so this video is basically reading out the patch notes for 3.20. And I'm not sure which champions was in this patch. But basically, I, I think I think it was actually a really good idea that I did this video as a first one. And the reason I did it was because it was such a long video and it took a lot of speaking. It wasn't like, like if I did a shard pull video, it's kind of just reactions. But something like this was really cool for me because it was me actually speaking, right? Like trying to actually speak into the camera and reading out a lot of scripts. So it was actually a really important video I felt like for me at the time. If the target's timing is equal or below 50%, hack to bits. Attacks one enemy four times. Each critical hit has a 50% chance of decreasing the cooldown of Gore Maker. So he's got a bit of a crew track, so kind of multi hit, so it'll be good for the <laughs> Fire Knight. It's going to be a very heavy DPS in a. I just said that Gore Maker is going to be like crew track, sir, because it does a four time hitter. That's on active skill, YST. Arena. Attacks all enemies will ignore 20% of each target's defense, will ignore a further 5% of defense for each buff on the target. Okay. Increases this <laughs> damage speed by 6 and crit damage by 7% for each enemy this champion kills in a round. Stacks up to 30% plus a 35% crit damage stacks will reset if this champion is killed. Whenever this enemy champion was revived, fills this champion terminated by 5%. <laughs> It's like I don't even know that I'm talking to anybody else behind the screen because obviously, how many views does this get? We're on... Views did we get? 329 views. So obviously I didn't expect anyone to see this but my clan. So I was basically just trying to talk to myself pretty much. Okay, okay. So he's going to be a heavy DPS. So if you're going to be going for the fusion, I think he is the fusion champion. So if you can go for it, it's a fragment one. False information! You start off your YouTube journey by saying King Garrog's the fusion. Oh arguably easier than the other ones but each to their own <laughs> let's dive right into Roxon then legendary magic attack champion oh. from the lizardmid faction attacks one enemy has a 50% chance of filling this term meter by 10% also has a 50% chance of placing a perfect veil buff on this champion for one turn if the attack is critical jingle ambush Attacks one enemy, fills this champion's turn meter by 50%, has a 75% chance of placing a stun debuff on the target for one turn when attacking while under a veil and perfect veil buff. Has a 75% chance of placing a sleep debuff on the target for one turn when attacking without veil or perfect veil. Okay, so throw him in with a duchess or anyone who does a veil, he's going to be doing well, alright? Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> oh my god, I didn't even explain a thing. Throw him in with a duchess and you'll be good, pretty much. There's a block debuffs 25 overall he looks he looks very strong all right does he he's not that strong okay i am brago legendary spirit defense orcs champion molten pummeling attacks one enemy has a 20 percent chance of decreasing the duration of all buffs by one turn then he places a 60 percent increased defense buff on all allies for three turns then attacks one enemy has a 75 percent chance of placing a stun debuff for one turn has a 75 percent chance of placing a stun debuff for two turns if the target is under two or more buffs okay <laughs> attacks all enemies has a 50 percent chance of placing a provoke debuff for one turn also places a 50 percent decrease attack debuff on all enemies if i am brago is under increased defense buff so it kind of works with his fearless charge it counteracts all right it's like increase just, the defense of all allies. It's like I'm trying to like, like tell myself what the skills is instead of telling you guys. Champions defense as a passive and increases ally defense. Doom tower. Okay, so he's made to help you sustain through the doom tower of a content. All right, <laughs> Melga Steel Girdle, oh. epic, epic spirit HP dwarfs champion. Let's see what she's doing then. Attacks one enemy has a fifty percent chance of removing one debuff from a random ally. Okay, it's a bit meh. 
is places a shield buff on all allies for equal for 20% of this champion's max HP for two turns. Also places a 15% continuous heal buff on all allies for two turns. This is great because in the dwarfs faction, as we all know, there's very, 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 very small amount of champions that can help you get through this. And to have one that's got a shield and continuous heal. Finally, YST, a big help. you're actually explaining something. Let's go. Glorious Return, basic, revives two random allies with 20% HP and 20% turn meter. Once ascended, revives two random allies with 20% HP and 20% turn meter. Also places a shield. Okay, this champion is going to be great for faction wars. It's going to be great for the Scarab when you're using shields and revives. It's going to be a great one and it's not legendary either. So booking it is, doesn't look too complicated. As long as you've got some in your vault, it should be all right. <laughs> Booking him shouldn't be too complicated as long as you got some in your vault. <laughs> We've got books in our vaults, by ST. Ancela Yasmin, Epic Force Support Bannerlord. Basic, attacks one enemy, attacks one enemy, places an extra hit if the target has no active buffs. Heals all allies by 40% of their max HP. Heals by 60% instead if the ally has 50% HP or less. Whoa. <laughs> that's... That's got Apothecary V2 written all over it. We've needed... Uh like well not needed but if you've got a apothecary and you pull this champion you might want to consider swapping it around that is bad advice but yes uh i don't know what i was thinking when i said that she does have a really good heal but she doesn't have like the manipulation of turn meter or increased speed i don't know why i thought a heal then but then again it was two years ago i'm just trying to think like which other champions could heal to that caliber there probably was a few, maybe Steel Skulls, champions like that, but... Lulling Chant has a 50% chance of removing all buffs from all enemies, then places a sleep debuff. Okay, so... She's like a Madame slash a Puff Carry thrown into one with a bit of sleep. She's going to be a very, very good champion. If you just stack her with some accuracy... I thought she would, honestly. Yes, go to sleep YST like Cornelia. I actually felt like she has the potential still to be a really good champion, if I'm honest. But back then it wasn't, because the chance isn't a hundred percent chance to remove all debuffs, right? And then it places the sleep who have active buffs, so it's like you're trying to remove them, but then if you don't remove, but do you get what I'm trying to say? The kit just doesn't make any sense because it's places the sleep on enemies who have active buffs, but the whole point of the kit is to make sure they don't have active buffs. So I don't know, it's a bit of a weird one. Stack of some sustain. She's going to be a great champion in the arena and all around. I can see her being used in a lot of places for early to mid game and even some late game things. Really? Okay, <laughs> Vogoth. Vogoth. That's so, a reskin of that. So Vogoth came out when I first started. That's interesting. Uh, rare that they had for the fusion before. Rarity epic, of course. Spirit, together, HP, maybe. undead hordes. Attacks one enemy three times. Each has a 30% chance of increasing the duration of a random debuff on the target by one turn. Attacks all enemies. Has a 60% chance of placing a provoke debuff on all enemies for one turn. Also has a 60% chance of placing a decreased attack. <laughs> you see why this video is so important, guys? Like, whilst we're getting halfway through this, I can see it in myself. It's like, I, I was so scared to talk, but then the more that I was talking, it was actually allowing me to start explaining things, right? A little bit. So my brain was starting to tick and I was actually feeling a little bit better about talking to you guys because I know that my wife's in the next room and I felt like <laughs> I, was, I was scared to like talk too loud so she doesn't hear me being a nerd. So basically after this guys, we basically just went through all the other champions and stuff. Defense. I don't want to like drag out this video way too long or you guys are just going to lose interest. I guess. One but I will leave this in the description below if you guys do want to go watch it in full by some chance to laugh at yourself. But we, we looked at Ugo, we looked at Old Hermit Jorg. The uh, Ogryn Tribes Daily Login Rewards? What daily Login Rewards, but fear not, it doesn't mean you're- What actually was in this? So this is when they added more space. Okay. Oh, this is when they extended the Daily Login Reward program. Alright, let's see what my outro was like, that'll be funny. Alright. Where did I go? That's going to be all for this video. If you're excited for patch 3.2, let me know in the comments which champion you're going to be trying to get. Hopefully there's a 10x for some of them because some of them are going to be not game changing, but they're going to be great additions to the account at least. And subscribe, like, comment, all that good stuff. And I'll see you on the next one. Peace. But yeah, I think that's going to be all for today's video, guys. If you did enjoy it, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. And I'll catch you guys in a video soon. Peace.